Isabel, uh, we'll go through the papers for a final time this morning with Emma Wolfe and Matthew Stadden, but can Nicola and I just make a point? We're doing a story in this segment about Easter eggs, and there are none here. And do you know what that is? Why? Cuts. Cuts. <laughs> no Easter eggs. No. Well, I just made a very expensive mistake, I think, for the company, because I just dropped my mic pack down the toilet in that very short break. So apologies. Done it. Done it. Hopefully my microphone is Try working. That's a lot of Easter eggs. That's a lot of Easter eggs, yeah. Hey! If, if, my, uh, if my microphone does cut out, uh, that is why. Matthew... <laughs> Talk to me about the world population, please. What would what? you like to know, Nicola? Well, I would hope <laughs> that it's going to stabilise or at least drop a little bit. There are real arguments, aren't there, about whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, mm. population decline or population Why growth. Why is there a decline? Well, the, the, envir the environment comes into it, by the way, and the impact on the environment. But there is a decline. I, I don't know what the reason is. Contraception? Well, total fertility rate needs to be 2.1. Women need to have 2.1 babies mm. each for the population to go up. Men? And it's it's going down, guys. Listen, this is going to be the first time that the global population goes down since the Black Death, since the bubonic oh plague in the God. 1300s. Wow. This, this is scheduled to happen in the next... predicted to happen in, in the coming decades. Interestingly, and most relevantly, perhaps, for our viewers, is the fact that our total fertility rate has gone down from where it was in 1950, at what you might say is a... Uh, a healthy 2.19. It's as low as 1.49 in, in 2020. Not in your house. Can I just ask the obvious question? Because it can be a little bit light-hearted, this programme. What? 2.19. Who's got 1.9 oh, of a baby? I have that average. Average. I've got 1.19. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 1.19. The irony of this story is we spent the entire break showing each other baby pictures, we did. didn't we? Which we is, did. Which is, which is, we did. Just, I want to say one thing about this, which is important, right? Is that we have an aging population. Yeah. If our if our fertility rate continues to go down as I think it is predicted to, that means that we have lots and lots of older people relying on fewer and fewer younger people to sustain them, and that means immigration. I've mm -hmm. done my bit. I really can't do any more. You can't I've do any more. <laughs> I can't do any more. <laughs> Look, it's obvious. I mean, women used to, you know, some women would have five, six, seven children. They're not doing that now. People can't afford to have more children. There are so many reasons. Men, the male sperm count is dropping because I not think... Not in my house, All sorts not. of <laughs> female hormones in the waterways and in our, you know, general... I mean, there are many, many reasons why this is happening, but it is worrying demographically. Is it, is it partly... I'm, I don't, we'll be careful where I tread here. Is it partly Lots because... Lots of women don't women have are, children at all, so many, then the rest many, of us have to make up Many more women it. have careers than they well, used to do. Well, we're presume We're kind of working off Western culture, aren't we? Whereas this is globally... Yeah, that yeah the, but the, the balance right. means... And it, it, yeah, and I would say probably, yeah, within Western culture, yes, uh, women are choosing careers, which I think is obviously a good thing. However, at some point, there is a breaking point, isn't there? Because people are living an awful lot longer Longer. There has to be this balance of, well, if we're going to have older people around for longer, unfortunately, we cannot keep up with uh, that birth rate. Because Text from the be wife. No space. Text from the wife. Don't even think about it. I'm done. <laughs> so that's absolutely true, isn't it? But it is interesting because is you talk about the problems in the world and lack of housing and all that, but it is an older population. It that is, tipping point will happen. Also, babies and having children is a huge cost on the environment. You know, it's yeah. one of the most kind of environmentally demanding things you can do to the planet. So there is that balance I made as that well. point once on social media and I got anti-Semitic death threats from people, I think, in America because there's this sort of white replacement theory that yeah. Jews are trying to encourage people to have fewer babies. Oh, and yeah. I mean, th this like is this. This. really sinister stuff. I mean, the reason I made the point yeah. was because of what Emma said, which is the environment. But we have to get the balance right, because if we don't have enough young people in our country to look after the elderly Maybe people, I'll then we lecturing. suffer. Maybe I'll start lecturing on how to be successful at creating life. <laughs> well, <laughs> good luck to you and Boris Johnson in that endeavour. He's got well, more than me. We, yes, that we know of. Uh, Emma, move us on now to a story in The Times about junior yeah. doctors. Mm. Well, I mean, just more, more bad news, and this is going to roll on and on and on. So they voted, junior doctors voted 98% in favour of extending the union strike mandate for the next six months, which means they can carry on striking probably into September, which is obviously very bad news for the government. Uh, not a great look as they go towards an election. Um, the BMA say they're in the struggle for the long haul. There seems to be very little um, progress or any little, very little hope to ending the pay dispute. Um, and, you know, a real sense on either side that actually they're not getting anywhere. We also have strikes being announced for tubes and trains and transport, so there's just more, more strike misery. It feels less grim at the moment because, you know, it's spring rather than winter. But really, this is awful news for the NHS. We've still got the backlog. It's a terrible state. I really it's think it's a terrible state. state. 
but we've got the whole backlog and we've got people having you know appointments cancelled and all of this every time we have another strike we are going to have all of those you know, I, um, four days, five days of appointments and surgeries and procedures cancelled, adding to the backlog. I'm going to We're sound like a Tory MP has given up, but I will say this. Um, it'll be very interesting when the Labour Party, presumably, I have to say those words, wins the next election, whether they give out pay rises left, right and centre. And I'm just saying that because, again, we talk about those voters who will, yeah. will not believe until they see that the Labour Party has changed. They will believe, whatever they, they say, that they I will print money. They and they I'm money. not saying they will. No, I'm they just saying that's the thing. I suspect they won't be giving out pay rises left, right and centre. But what I hope and would expect of a Labour government is that they will at least be properly constructive and sit round the table and mm. show proper levels of respect to these people who work incredibly hard to keep us alive. And the same goes Eggs for the BMA. Eggs and or Greg's? What are we doing? Both. I want both. Matthew, please. I know you do, because it's Talk food. to me about why Vladimir Putin and Greg's <laughs> appear in the same story. Yes, yeah, good this. Well, the Sun, page 11. This is just because Spooks, because our intelligence services, have been looking into the possibility that they have been hacked, these, these fast food stores and supermarkets, oh. by Russia. I mean, we would none of us, I think, would put no it past Putin if he could. No do, time to pie. If, what a great headline! If can't Putin be could good. get his hands on our sausage rolls, I'm sure he would. But it seems that, that doesn't he sound hasn't. right. But I don't know what you meant. <laughs> he hasn't. Listen, the point is that there has been no cyber attack, as far as we know. Although I think, from listening to the radio yesterday, it can take time to work that out. But basically, there has been a, conf, a, a, conf, a confluence of fast food and supermarket outlets going down or their tech going down and that has led to the question not a conspiracy theory but the reasonable question that Putin might be behind it. I can't believe I mean all the conspiracy nonsense about Kate about Princess Catherine and no one is looking at this. A friend <laughs> of mine who's a cyber security expert texted me and said there's more to this Greg's going down Sainsbury's going down Tesco's going down massive massive outages of our of our great of our so Sainsbury's stuff. going to turn up with my shop that because Putin way. doesn't want me to have but crumpets I'm not, saying it's Putin. I'm not saying it's Putin but that is the way to attack a country yeah. is basically we're losing billions by this kind mm. of thing mm. it's very very suspicious it reminds us how, how although technology has driven us week. forward in so many ways it also makes us vulnerable yeah. very so, vulnerable right eggs my friends Emma mail right. and express this is basically about popular Easter eggs costing and also this great story in the Orkney Islands yeah. where uh, did you do this because this is brilliant this is funny this yeah, man who lives on the Orkney Islands accident it's very simple he accidentally thought he was ordering 80 eggs I think there's a population of 500 so he thought he thought he'd order 80 eggs he ordered my friends 80 cases of eggs <laughs> so he ended up with I don't that was know a bit how excessive, many wasn't it yeah more he ended up with more eggs than there are even people on the... Why was he buying 80? Has island. he got no friends? He's What's a retailer. He's a shopkeeper. Oh, he's a shopkeeper. He does a proper job. But you want more than one a person. How many Easter eggs do you get? <laughs> I'd probably get two. Two? Yeah. It's Easter fun. eggs for your... No, when we have our Easter egg hunt, which we still have, about 50 of us in the wider family on, on Easter Sunday, I think we get at least sort of 20 each. <laughs> Small I love one. Big don't you one. love the champagne sodas? <laughs> when we have our Easter on a Sunday, I'll do that goose and a couple of glasses In the or whatever. Home. We all get about 20 each. Anyway, up the workers. Brilliant, Matt. I love that. Now, <laughs> do you do your Easter egg hunt around a cherished local heritage what? sites, Matthew? Well, supposedly because so, yes. Apparently they make you happier. They, I mean, I don't, I don't really understand. Unless it's Stonehenge, which depresses the hell out of me. I don't understand this article. I've tried to understand it. I don't really understand the methodology. But apparently it makes you about 515 quid of spending a year because they've used a monetary barometer to measure this happier if you live next to some sort of grade but two that, heritage. This is such an obvious... This is obvious. Why can't you work it out? <laughs> it's obvious because you obviously I, what live in a... What I can't work a... out, Emma, is how, that they, how they work it out. Yes, we might feel that. How do we measure that, well-being? Yeah, well, People exactly. How do we silly... measure well-being? This is, goes back to, I think, about are you suffering from anxiety? Are you suffering from well-being? But if you, you live, live in, the in a green, leafy area with a historic, lovely historic landmark, Doesn't you're obviously going to be... have to be a green, leafy Well, I live by the beach, and that has definitely raised my... Definitely. My, my, what's the word? Don't not temperature. Know. You're not helping at all, because what came well to mind... Your what? well-being, your mood. Just that, yeah, it does. Can I just make this important point, right? If this is to believe this study, and why should we not believe it... It's not just the countryside. Chelsea Bridge, for example, and the River it's Thames. Beautiful, it's beautiful because you're living in an it affluent area. You, I think. Um, right, listen, I'm going to do this. Emma, this is a great story in the Express. Drivers had voted uh, their favourite songs. It's wrong on this, by the way. Yeah. Um, about when they're driving. People are yeah. talking about Chris Rea driving home for Christmas. Apparently, Don't Stop Me Now by Queen is the number one song. If you're banging down the motorway, uh, that's the 
song you're going to. I have to tell you, this is that's already in my will. That's my uh, funeral song. Don't stop me now. Um, <laughs> I used to is. run to that. That's a great song. It just yeah. everything. It where where everything. are you going after you haven't been stopped? So you die and you're carrying on. Where are you going, Jeremy? Just out of thing. And then um, one moment in time by Whitney Houston. That's as the it. coffin goes into the flames, I will be free. Everybody cries and they go and get drunk. Dancing Queen. Dancing uh, Abba, Queen is uh, up there. Uptown Girl from the Jolster. And yeah. I want to dance with Walking somebody, on Whitney sunshine. Houston. Katrina and the Waves. Yeah. What would you, get... what would you, you don't drive, but what song gets you going? Um, I like... Um, what's the not Tracy, in the mood? Tracy Chapman song oh. is a good driving fast song. Cars. Yeah, fast yeah, up, but um, any song. musical theatre. Also, Happy Pharrell Williams. That's yeah. one of the. So that's my, one of the songs. I made a mistake. Love. I was listening to Leonard Cohen driving through central London oh. last night, and I went into a bus lane. Costly. Oh my goodness! Did you get fined? But worth I'm it. Sure I will be. No, worth not, it for I'm Leonard Cohen. Listen. Honestly, worth what a life! Penny. I was listening to Leonard Cohen <laughs> yawn, and I went into a bus lane, and then I went home and discovered I've got twenty Easter eggs <laughs> on my country pile. <laughs> um, it's the ups and downs of life, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, songs, yeah, I know. When you're driving, that's interesting. What you said, theatre, musical theatre. Oh my god, a bit of Les Mis, mm. Wicked, any Disney song, big into it. Yeah, you know proper. Really sad. Or Robbie Williams. Yeah. Well, every single part, lyric, and word of Les Miserables from beginning to end. I can. Believe that. Will you be in musical theatre? Can you do it? I used to. I used to do that kind of what thing. What happened? Yeah. Why did you end up here? What happened? Broadcast baby. That's where it's at. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, we're off for some auditions to be in the chorus line for Guys and Dolls. Well. Uh, thank you, gang. I'm off for my Easter eggs. Yes, exactly. I bet you are. Your valet will be laying them out, Stephen. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> thank you, Matt. Really appreciate it. Thank you. See you both very, very soon. We'll move